Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick update on uh, my two server builds. I uh, kind of have gotten some new parts in and made some changes. Uh, so this is the uh, 2U Super Micro server I built based on the CSE uh, 826 chassis. Um, it's got the X9 DRD IF motherboard with two 2628L uh, processors. Those are 8 core, 16 thread. Um, kind of low wattage or low TDP, if you will, um, processors. And I'm actually going to be putting that in kind of my test box. Um, this, uh, they just have some two six, 2609 um, cheap CPUs. I think I paid five bucks total for them. Um, but anyway, it's going to be putting that in here and actually got some new uh, CPUs in the mail today. These are, um, let's see if they focus on there. They're 2650V2s, so another 8-core, 16-thread uh, processors, but those um, run at a higher TDP, and they uh, have a pretty high clock speed at, I think, 2.6 standard, and they turbo up pretty high as well. But the nice thing about those is they a pass mark score of about 19,000, just a little below that, um, if you go check that online for the dual uh, CPUs. So it should make a nice, uh, speedy box. Uh, I'm still kind of wanting to put ZFS on this with Proxmox and be like my daily driver. Uh, unfortunately, I'm kind of just waiting. Um, I need to buy some more uh, three terabyte drives and a couple two terabyte drives. Uh, I'm going to create two VDEVs for the same Z pool and move all my files over um, onto the two terabyte um, VDEV. And then once that's complete, uh, I'm going to create a second um, VDEV and then combine them in a pool. And that should give me about 20 gigabytes of space. Um, yeah, so that'd be nice. I'm going to go ahead and put the processors in here and then move these CPUs over to my test box. Um, this is the Supermicro 1U server. Uh, it is the CS816. Um, this thing's been running pretty good, actually. I do have Proxmox and uh, ZFS on there. These are just um, four um, two terabyte drives. They're just in a RAID Z1. There's really not any data on there that's important. I've just been kind of um, playing around, installing um, some different um, kind of uh, virtual machines, if you will, on there and just kind of testing that and seeing the performance. Um, you know, it should help a lot getting the 16 uh, threads per CPU for a total of 32. Um, right now I'm only able to set up a couple processors before it gets maxed out. Um, I also got two new fans for it. For it. These are just cheap, like you know, nine bucks on eBay ships for two more just to get some better air, airflow. Got all the banks filled out. Um, it actually worked out perfectly because they, there's six headers on the motherboard. Um, I did kind of have to extend the cable with this one here, but that fits. Um, and then these blanks were actually what was in there before. So I'll probably just toss these or save them if I ever need them. And then I actually found this cool um, kind of insert. I think it's actually meant for um, an 825 or like an 8. 36, um, but it fits in the floppy drive here, and I can just put like a two and a half inch uh, SSD. Um, you know, it's a little tight because I don't think it's meant to go in this, but it does fit. So that'd be nice to have um, that. And then I actually did order the official Super Micro um, DVD insert, so I can put another 2.5 drive uh, in there as well. Um, but yeah, these are coming along nicely. Uh, I'm trying to do the best cable management I can. Kind of zip tied all these. Got to had to get that breakup cable and got it all cleaned up and installed in there. I'm gonna kind of clean these up once um, I get the drives in there, and I'll probably need to do some cutting, cutting and soldering. Don't worry, I'll make it look nice with like heat, heat shrink and stuff to kind of um, get these the right length. And also, I got a four pin adapter here just to make sure it has enough power. But yeah, I'm gonna get these uh, CPUs installed, and I'll uh, check in with you guys um, after that's done. All right, got the CPU switched all over and ready to test these out. Um, as you can see, here's the old uh, 2609s. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Um, you know, these are not the greatest CPUs. They use a lot of, they use 80, uh, 80 watts of TDP, and they got four cores, no, no extra uh, threads, so pretty low um, speed, uh, you know, I, Definitely don't recommend using these, but again, they're great to keep around. Um, both of these motherboards that I purchased 
um, they came with a BIOS um, pretty old that would not support um, the V2 uh, Ivy Bridge CPUs. So, you know, I'd be up a crick um, if I ordered these and Ivy Bridge were not able to update them. Um, I do think the X9 DRD boards don't have any issues supporting the Ivy Bridge CPUs. These are both version uh, 1.1. You can see that kind of right here next to the Super or ROHS um, signal. That's kind of upside down there. But as you can see, these are revision 1.1. 1 .1. Um, there is a version 2.0 or 1.2 of these boards, and I believe a 1.1 or 1.0. But these are both 1.1. They support the Ivy Bridge, no problem. Um, I was, you know, a little concerned about that, but uh, I think all of these. But I know some of the other X9 series don't support Ivy Bridge, um, at least on the 1.0 models. And the 1.1, I know, can be a mixed bag. So, um, you know, make sure that you double check, and do your due diligence, you know, before buying these 2011 boards. Um, but other than that, you know, this is a really great platform. I really like the performance to cost. Um, you know, like I said, these are, you know, nine, I got the 2650s in here, um, V2, um, you know, 1900 pass or 19,000 pass mark score. You know, not the greatest by today's standard, but still pretty fast. And considering the cost, I paid 100 bucks for both of these. I paid, you know, combined, I paid $100 for this motherboard. I paid $30 shipped for 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, you probably won't be able to get that price, but, you know, this is, um, you know, 1333 um, Samsung chips, um, they came out of an IBM CPU or an IBM server. And, um, you know, you know, performance like that for, you know, maybe, you know, $300, I did pay a lot for the case. Um, they are um, a little spendy. The case itself, not so much, but shipping can be expensive. But, you know, you can build a pretty nice system, you know, whether you want like a home lab or, you know, even if you're a small business and you want to build a server, but don't, you know, have, you know, thousands of dollars to spend, you know, these can be great systems. Um, you know, 12 hot swap bays, um, SAS 2.0, and, you know, got my HBA 2011, or 9211, excuse me. Um, you know, I paid 30 to $20 for this card and flashed it. You know, this, this, ser this used server stuff, you know, it's a great deal. And you get some Dell and HP stuff that's already set up, you know, doesn't need as much um, configuration. But, you know, I enjoy building these bare bones, um, you know, kind of testing them out. You know, I got these kind of lower speed fans in here. You know, this sits in my office closet and I can hardly, hardly hear it. I did, you know, did get a new uh, fan to kind of replace this one that's um, cracked a little bit the housing, but not a big deal. Um, you know, I got redundant power supplies and these are the, the quiet ones. Um, you know, they're, the other ones can get pretty loud. Um, this server, you know, again, you know, I bought a 1U chassis. It was like 70 bucks shipped. You know, another $50 for the motherboard. These CPUs, while they are a little more spendy um, than normally, I got the, the 2628Ls for $50 combined shipped. You know, that's 32 threads. They're a little lower clock speed. But, yeah, these are nice systems and, you know, look kind of a good way on, you know, learning virtualization. Um, you know, got the four bays, um, and this this backplane is just a pass through, so it doesn't really matter if it's SAS, you know, one or two or not, because it just passes the SATA ports over. But yeah, these are nice systems. This one's actually, you know, pretty quiet. I'll probably move it to the garage or only turn on when I need it. Um, it's nowhere near as loud as this one was fully loaded. But yeah, the you know, and then got 64 gigs of RAM. You know, I paid this. These ones are a little more expensive and actually slower speed from the same seller. Actually, it was an auction, but I won, you know, matching set for forty dollars. You know, great systems. You know, lots of, you know, fun building them and doing videos on them, and um, you know, pair well with CFS and Proxmox, and you know, doing virtualization. And so, you know, I hope you guys enjoy these videos, and you know, let me know if you have any questions as I kind of take you through this journey. I'm gonna kind of go over some videos installing. Um, you know, Proxmox, and you know, the IPMI is awesome. You can turn these on remotely and, you know, mount uh, a virtual drive. You know, I installed Proxmox by mounting a CD image to this computer and installing it that way. And boot, you can boot from a virtual drive. I mean, this is stuff you're not going to find on kind of mainstream
consumer grade hardware. So definitely check this out if it's something you're interested in. Um, you know, I'm just kind of learning about it, but uh, yeah, these are great systems and you know, I'm going to test out these CPUs and you know, hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Thanks. Bye.